Welcome to the Township Council meeting, Monday, September 9th, 2024. This meeting is now called to order. Please all rise to suit to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, at this time, please read the statement of public notice. Take notice that adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with NJSA 10 colon 4-8 and NJSA 10 colon 4-10 as follows. A notice of the meeting was formally posted on the bulletin board at the municipal build building located at 225 Main Street, Little Falls, New Jersey on January 4th, 2024. A copy of the notice was sent to the North Jersey Herald New and News and the record on that same date. Additionally, a copy of the notice was filled in the office of the township clerk on said date. A link and a telephone number to join the meeting virtually can be accessed on our township website at www.lfnj.com. Electronic provisions have been established for the public to participate during the public comment portion of the meeting. Thank you. At this time, please call the roll. Council Member Patel. Present. Council Member Murphy. Present. Council Member Hablitz. Present. Council Member Vincheri. Present. Council President Scoba. Present. Mayor Damiano. Thank you, Council President. This evening, to kick off the, the night before we get into our master plan a presentation and our proclamations, we have an individual who has been instrumental in assisting our EMS program here in town, who is being promoted to crew chief as a result of a former crew chief uh, resigning for employment in another town in another capacity entirely uh, as an inspector. Uh, we wish her well. And at this time, we invite up to the front of the room EMT Philip Wilk so that he can be sworn in as our EMT crew chief and receive his insignia. And I'm going to ask our other EMT uh, crew chief, Ms. Greco, to join us up here for this. Raise your right hand. I, Philip Wilk, I, Philip, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith, and that I will bear true faith, and allegiance, and allegiance to the same, to the same, and to the governments established in the United States, and to the governments established in the United States, and in this state, and in this state, under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help. I do further solemnly swear, swear that I will impartially, I will impartially and, justly and justly perform all of the duties, all of, the duties of, EMS crew chief, of EMS crew chief according to the best of my ability. For the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me. Congratulations. Thank you. Sir. Sign right here. And I'll present you with your insignia to be worn with your uniform. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 At this time, we're going to be calling up our township planner. That's we have three proclamations that maybe we're ahead of the okay. plan this evening. That's okay. Hey, go ahead, Mayor. Thank you, Council President. The very first proclamation we have this evening is our National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month proclamation. And it reads, whereas September is known around the United States as National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month and is intended to help promote awareness surrounding each of the suicide prevention resources available to us and our community. And whereas suicidal thoughts 
can affect anyone regardless of age, gender, race, orientation, income level, religion, or background. And whereas, according to the CDC, each year more than 41,000 people die by suicide. And whereas suicide is the 10th leading cause of death among adults in the US and second leading cause of death among people age 10 to 24. And whereas every member of our community should understand that throughout life struggles, we all need the occasional reminder that we are all silently fighting our own battles. And whereas I encourage all residents to take the time to inquire as to the well being of their family, friends, and neighbors to genuinely convey their appreciation for them, which may go a long way in helping someone realize that suicide is not the answer. And now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Mayor James Belford Damiano, on behalf of the Little Falls Township Council, do hereby proclaim the month of September 2024 as National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month in the Township of Little Falls. And up next this evening, we have a second proclamation recognizing Hispanic Heritage Month. And it reads, whereas Hispanic Heritage Month is an opportunity to celebrate the rich cultural traditions and honor the significant achievements of our Hispanic and Latino American communities. And whereas Hispanics are the largest ethnic minority group in the country and make valuable contributions to the Commonwealth and business, industry, government, education, the sciences, arts, and faith. And whereas Hispanic and Latino Americans have made enormous contributions to our, our diverse society by sharing their talents, culture, traditions, and their deep connection to family values and the commitment to faith and the desire to live the American dream. And whereas we honor Hispanic Americans and their many contributions which strengthen our society as a whole. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Mayor James Belford Damiano, on behalf of the Little Falls Township Council, do hereby proclaim September 15th through October 15th, 2024, as Hispanic Heritage Month in the Township of Little Falls. And last but not least this evening, we have a Childhood Cancer Awareness Month proclamation. And in honor of reading this, I'm going to ask Corey to join me here in the front of the room, whose nephew, Liam, as many of us know here in Little Falls, passed away uh, about a year ago. And we remember him and everything and all of the joy that Liam brought to all of us in this community as we read this proclamation. And it reads, whereas childhood cancer is the leading cause of death by disease in children, and one in 285 children in the United States will be diagnosed by their 20th birthday. And whereas 46 children per day, or 16,790 children per year, are diagnosed with cancer in the US, and there are approximately 40,000 children on active treatment at any given time. And whereas the average age of diagnosis is six years old, compared to 66 years old for adults, cancer diagnosis, and 80% of childhood cancer patients are diagnosed late and with metastatic disease. And whereas on average, there have been a 0.6% increase in the incidences per year since the mid-1970s, resulting in an overall incidence increase of 24% over the last 40 years. And whereas two-thirds of childhood cancer patients will have chronic health conditions as a result of their treatment toxicity, with one quarter being classified as severe to life threat. And whereas approximately one half of childhood cancer families rate the associated financial toxicity due to out-of-pocket expenses as considerable to, to severe, and in the last 20 years, only four new drugs have been approved by the FDA, FDA to specifically treat childhood cancer. And whereas the National Cancer Institute recognizes the unique research needs of childhood cancer and the associated needs that have increased funding to carry out this and hundreds hundreds of nonprofit organizations at the local and national level, including the American Childhood Cancer Organization and helping children with cancer and their families cope through educational, emotional, and financial support. And whereas researchers and healthcare professionals work diligently dedicating their expertise to treat and cure children with cancer. And whereas too many children are affected by this deadly disease and more must be done to raise the awareness and find a cure. And now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Mayor James Belford Damiano, on behalf of the Little Falls Township Council, do hereby proclaim the month of September 2024 as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in the Township of Little Falls. Corey, thanks for being here. Thank you. Yeah, Corey.
Okay, at this time, we're going to have our master plan presentation. This plan has been worked on for quite a lengthy, long time. Our presenter, Sam, is going to go through the program, and we'll take some questions after the presentation. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening. My name is San Chavan, and I'm the township planner. So um, we have the presentation. If we could get that started, please. Thank you. So this draft master plan, um, is, it's been a year long process. And before we begin, I'd like to give, uh, next slide, please. Um, I would like to give an overview of what is a master plan. Um, so the master plan is a guiding document for multidisciplinary planning. And uh, the uh, in the state of New Jersey, the municipal land use law provides stipulations regarding how the master planning process is conducted. Uh, by law, it must be updated every 10 years. And the last time a comprehensive plan was prepared for in Little Falls was in 2002, but it was re-examined um, in 2008, 2013, 2021. And last year where it was recognized that there was a need for a comprehensive master plan. Um, as for the municipal land use law, goals and objectives and land use are mandatory and the rest are optional. But given the different, um, I would say the interrelationship between us, uh, different, different elements, it was essential to prepare five out of the 13 elements that are um, that are stipulated as per the municipal land use law. So we we have the mandatory land use plan element, circulation plan element, economic development, sustainability, and open space element. Um, the land use plan element and the housing plan, which was prepared um, as per the third round um, requirements, are the two which provide a policy framework for adoption. Um, as per the land use law, the master plan is adopted by the planning board. Um, but based on the recommendations, um, it provides a policy framework where the governing body may adopt ordinances. Um, next slide, please. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, it, it has been a, a little over a year, actually, uh, but a, a, let's say a year-long pro um process and we've had regular meetings so we first had a subcommittee meeting which had members of the um, uh, township staff uh, we had our uh, prior administrator our current administrator James De Maria uh, who's a part of the subcommittee we also had representation from the planning board where we had our board chair our board attorney a part of the subcommittee as well as the mayor and uh, the council president so um we've had uh, we used to have regular uh, subcommittee meetings where we dis um, discuss this vet out um, different um, uh, data uh, we've uh, conducted an online survey because it was very essential to get public input so we had an online survey we conducted three community uh, workshops. Uh, the first workshop was in actually end of September 2023. The second one uh, followed uh, a month later and the final one was end of November, December. We also conducted interviews with the different department heads and uh, consultants to get their input and um, there were working sessions with the master plan subcommittee where we discussed the different elements. And then finally, 
here we are at the draft plan review session. Uh, we met with the planning board on uh, last Thursday, and this is the second draft review with you, the Township Council. Next slide, please. So, as I mentioned um, earlier, we had a community engagement, public participation. Um, we had this publicinput.com website where we had an online survey. And um, I have included everything in the appendices, but just to, to give you a brief overview of this, um, you know, 63% people thought resiliency was very important, quality of public education was the next important thing. People expressed concerns about traffic and congestion um, and condition of parks and recreational facilities. And um, people felt it was important to revitalize the downtown, uh, which is very similar to our own analysis, but it's nice to hear that uh, feedback as well. Next slide, please. So the, this, these, there were 420 survey participants, there were 26,000 responses, comments, and um, we also tried to uh, ascertain who was responding. So 93% were residents, 3% of the population owned a business but lived in the township as well, while the remaining 4% of the respondents were in the other um, category. So we asked, next slide please. So, we asked people why Little Falls. So, 38% said they found a home they liked. Um, the next 37% uh, th said they have been living in the township for more than 20 years. Uh, some said it's close to family and friends, character of community, quality of life. Next slide, please. So in any master planning process, we examine how the population has changed. So demographic anal analysis is very important. And we looked at, you know, because Montclair State is a part of, um, is within the jurisdiction. So um, it was important to also look at the age cohort. Um, so the population shows a gradual increase, um, very expected during the 50s and 60s, post-World War, baby boomers. Um, and then it fell down a little during the 70s and 80s to uh, gradually increase. We also looked more during the pandemic time, the past 13 years, and you can see that star, uh, you know, uh, steep uh, decrease, which can be obviously attributed to the students who moved out. And uh, we also looked at the forecast of population and uh, the regional uh, planning organization, the New Jersey Transportation Planning Authority, forecast the population to increase to about 16,600 in 2050, which is uh, like keeping up with the past, like a very gradual increase. Uh, next slide, please. It's, as I mentioned uh, to you before, that age cohort is very important, um, you know, because not just the number of people, but you also need to know what the characteristic is. And typically mimicking the, the country, it is a reverse pyramid where it is an aging population. So we also looked at generations, um, what's in the silent generation that's 80 plus, the baby boomers that are aging, Gen Xers like myself are also aging. So we tried to look at uh, all of that and found that 27% uh, of the population belong to the Gen Z, um, which again can be attributed to the students living in the town 24% are Gen Xers, age 45 to 59, 24% are baby boomers, and uh, only 19% were millennials, which is typically lower than the rest <laughs> of the country. Um, and there was a, a small percentage, 3%, about 80, which is the silent generation, and um, an equally smaller percent under the age of five. So as you can see from the graph, it's an aging population. We also looked at the racial composition and income um, and found it somewhat diverse, but majority, 78.9%, um, 
identified belonging to um, being uh, racially being white uh, with others belonging to um, one or more races. Um, uh, and we also looked at the income and as you all know, it's um, higher than the median income at a county level and state level as well. Uh, next slide, please. So as I mentioned in a master plan, goals and objectives are extremely important. And um, the land use, so we have goals and objectives for each each plan element. And the land use plan element uh, set forth major goals with uh, objectives, which are uh, described in detail on page 33 of this plan. But um, you have neighborhoods, established neighborhoods, and those need to be maintained, preserved, and enhanced. Um, it's equally important to create an attractive environment that encourages positive rateables and enhances the quality of life, as you'll see as we move along this presentation of what is the land use composition in, uh, in this township. Then to build upon existing efforts to promote transit-oriented development in appropriate areas of the town. The town is blessed. You have uh, three bu uh, major bus routes have a train station um, to expand opportunities uh, for mixed-use development along business corridors, um, to continue to ensure that zoning uh, districts and ordinance, um, uh, districts and regulations and land uses align with the township's goals and to promote measures that allow the township to be more resilient and uh, be able to lessen potential damage from current and future extreme weather e events. Now, these goals were developed based upon the review of the prior planning documents the existing condition analysis and the public input. In fact, they, they were vetted with the master plan subcommittee, but also vetted at the third uh, community workshop uh, in December. Next slide, please. So I write land use issues and I don't mean issues in a negative connotation, but more about the existing conditions in the township. And, um, you know, so some of the things that were identified during the master planning process was right, revitalizing the Newark Fountain Corridor, redevelopment to promote economic development, uh, revitalizing the downtown. Um, in the downtown, a lot of residents responded that there are relatively limited types of commercial uses. So whatever you could do to have a more diverse uh, blend of businesses um, is also um, uh, contributes to the economic health of a municipality. Um, one of the things we also noticed, and um, the planning board is well aware of this because we have so many applications, there was this need to amend zoning boundaries to better reflect existing, um, uh, existing uses and to uh, eliminate split zoning. Um, and as you all know, there are flood hazard areas along the Passaic and the Peckman. So um, again, these are just a few of them, but these are, again, as I mentioned, um, they were based upon the input obtained from various township staff, consultants, and the different public me uh, engagement mechanisms that we adopted. And, of course, our own analysis. Uh, we've been your planner for over uh, for a very long time, so we have that institutional knowledge about this township. Next slide, please. So... As I mentioned, um, as for our property data, 72.4% um, is residential property. We've examined the residential properties and um, some of the things ident we identified was the need to rezone some residential properties that are in the B1 zone or I zone that would better suit it uh, based on the characteristics um, and to amend zoning boundaries excuse me, to follow property lines and eliminate split zone lots. Next slide, please. So we also asked the uh, in our survey, what are the future housing types? And 83% um, said single family. Uh, there was a 43% uh, um, uh, expressed more of senior housing, 57% expressed um, the townhouses. And I would also uh, remind everyone that the multifamily 
housing that has been created, mo um, mostly it is based on the state's affordable housing mandates that we need to comply with. So that's also important to um, uh, keep in the back of your mind. Um, next slide, please. <clears throat> We also looked at the commercial and business district and 16% of uh, the acreage. As, so the New Jersey uh, land use mapping has this um, land uses identified is from 2015. It's, it's not, we compared that with the data, um, property tax data and, you know, uh, Montclair state is identified as commercial, but we know it's not, it's institutional. So it's important to, look at the data holistically um, and uh, some of the things uh, some of the things that we noted was that um, to review and revise code to allow for popular and modern uses like for example the current zoning permits uh, telephone exchange which is an obsolete use um, it's also important to update the zoning code to allow for medical uses and um, uh, another thing, Route 46 corridor, it's important to have uses that reflect the modern age of uses along highway commercial zones to revise and uh, to review and revise codes to revitalize commercial corridors along Main Street and Route 23 Newark Fountain uh, Turnpike. Next slide, please. Climate change vulnerability assessment is um, extremely important. Um, this is mandated. Uh, the governor passed a bill in February 2021 requiring every land use plan to have an extensive study of climate change and vulnerability. Um, every county has a hazard mitigation plan, which uh, served as a foundation for us to do our analysis. And some of the main vulnerability issues and recommendations, and it's, I'm sure, you all are familiar with was uh, nothing, nothing, no big surprises here, but I just want to quickly um, talk about the main highlights. One of it was to work with Passaic County and neighboring municipalities to stabilize the riverbeds along the Peckman to continue upgrading the water distributing piping system to work on mitigation measures to limit the chance of flood damage to the uh, township's rec center and DPW facility to ensure that critical facilities have backup generators and to develop a debris management plan. Next slide, please. So based on all these analysis, um, we developed um, key rec uh, recommendations. These are the key recommendations. Everything is given in detail in the actual master plan recommendation section. Um, but um, first was to review existing land use patterns and their compatibility with the zoning map and to make zoning boundary changes. So this is one of the many. Um, and we uh, put that under different categories, general, residential. So that way it's a very, we tried to organize it um, as, as clearly as possible. And these recommendations are the ones that really give the foundation for any potential uh, ordinance changes. Um, so uh, we also put forth recommendations to update zoning code to remove outdated uses and create definitions for popular commercial uses to amend and clarify sign lang uh, not sign language, I'm sorry, sign regulations. Uh, to evaluate the potential to permit mixed use development along Newark, Compton, Turnpike. And this uh, recommendation came based on the numerous use friends applications. Um, and that in land use planning is a sign that your existing zoning is not functioning or working. Um, to amend bulk re uh, requirements to spur growth and economic development in the downtown area. And to mitigate flood hazard and any natural hazards by implementing infrastructure projects. So next slide, please. So circulation. So um, in, in, in the world of land use planning and master planning, um, land use and circulation go hand in hand. Um, land uses um, bring with them different levels of traffic and parking requirements and vice versa. So it's important to study circulation as well. And these are the few major goals with numerous, um, numerous um, 
objectives, um, but they are first to provide a safe and efficient transportation system to encourage multimodal mobility, so all modes beyond just car. Uh, third is to enhance connections to key locations throughout the township. Next slide, please. So um, I I have this highlighted, but it's described in great detail in, in the actual document, but uh, how Little Falls travels. So in that we analyzed basically the different modes of transportation, um, the roadway jurisdiction. Uh, we looked at the data, what is the preferred uh, choice of um, travel for the township residents. We looked at the public transportation. We looked at the functional uh, classification of the roads and all of this requirement is again as for the municipal land use law. Um, we also looked at traffic um, circulation where we studied issues of congestion, identified uh, focus inter, um, intersections, which is not very dip. I don't think it's anything new here because I'm sure all of you are aware. But what we did is it makes us understand what improvements are necessary. Um, we also, uh, once again, looked at opportunities for bicycling and walking because the communities around you have those. So it's important to have regional connections, um, which what we try to do in this master plan is not prepare it in a silo and uh, prepare it as a living document and that each of these different um, uh, elements are interconnected. Like, for example, um, whatever recommendations are in the circulation are important when you look at it from a sustainability point of view, economic development point of view, and also in the point of view of open space and recreation opportunities for the township residents. Um, we uh, looked at streetscape guidelines. And when I said that um, all of these are interconnected, the point I'm trying to make here is that when you look at streetscape guidelines, you look at opportunities to um, uh, have safety um, kind of infrastructure that you could do um, sidewalk improvements. And the town has already started these efforts. You see those changes in um, uh, along Main Street, et cetera. So it, it's just recognizing that and uh, continuing these efforts. Um, we also studied downtown parking um, to just have a clear understanding and and, and uh, set forth uh, recommend um, funding opportunities and um, set forth the recommendations. Uh, next slide, please. So when asked um, at at the survey, eighty three percent rank traffic and congestion as an important uh, point, and 75% rank uh, bicycle and pedestrian safety as important. So that goes back to the analysis that we found, um, which is, and the recommendations that we're setting forth um, in the next uh, slide. Um, so these are the key recommendations. Um, everything else is on page 110 onwards, but um, first to, as you all know that major roads are under the county or state's jurisdiction. So we're recommending to continue working with the county and state partners on transportation measures that can help alleviate any kind of congestion in and around township uh, to improve pedestrian safety on Main Street through infrastructure improvements and to implement safety enhancements in streetscape design when capital improvements for roadways are needed and to include guidelines in redevelopment plans that improve walking and biking conditions between the areas and key town destinations to ensure that the township has adequate infrastructure for existing and projected growth in EV. And we've been doing that through the development application process as well. Um, and as everyone knows that um, since 2021, it's mandated to have EV um, infrastructure for different parking areas. And then finally, to just um, recommendations regarding parking, parking management strategies in the downtown area. So. Moving on to economic development. So economic development, all of this is um, extremely 
um, it's it's not an uh, again I'm repeating myself, but economic development is an essential aspect of any uh, town's um, fiscal health and vitality. Um, so um, we are recommending to continue to enhance the downtown area as a civic and economic part of the township to continue to seek stable, high quality rateables that also reflect favorably upon the image and identity of the township and to create a mutually beneficial relationship between Little Falls and Montclair State. I mean, it's it it has major land hold, holding in 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 this town so we've given uh, very specific like objectives in on page 115 but this is just an um, overview uh, next slide please so we asked as i mentioned again we asked people did our own analysis and these are the prior um, these are the few um, uh, issues a uh, lack of commercial acreage compared to residential use, as I mentioned, what the data shows. Um, there are some underutilized properties along the commercial corridor and, you know, traditional downtown. There's also increased competition from e-commerce retailers. So, um, and uh, one of the things was to create attractive downtowns with walkable amenities, which actually, um, if you look at towns which are known for their vitality, that's an essential factor. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms of improving economic development, um, we asked people um, through our public workshop, as well as our survey, what would they like to use more of? 63% of people said a variety of restaurants. Some, uh, the next was a variety of retail stores. Um, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of, uh, interest in having community gathering spaces, cultural facilities, public artwork. And um, as I mentioned to the planning board, and I'm repeating myself here, is uh, we do have the bones for that kind of uh, vital uh, downtown, especially given the greenway that is so right in the middle of uh, our downtown. So it kind of um, echoed what our analysis was selling as well, so which was good. Um, next slide, please. So these are the key economic development recommendations, and um, I am just highlighting the major ones. The rest of it is actually there in in the in the plan. It's um, in the plan. I, I'm just going to show page one thirty two. But one was um, every town to create an identity. Um, one of the recommendations was to develop a creative placemaking strategy that highlights the unique characters. With placemaking, it's usually through signage, through banners, et cetera. And I know that there is this, um, there's a signage, uh, there's a banner along the light post in um, on um, Main Street, but the recommendation is to continue developing that. Um, also to continue monitoring uh, mac macro, uh, economic trends, particularly focusing on what are the trends in retail and office, so that way you continue to have um, vital businesses in your town. Um, also to review regulatory incentives to encourage new mixed-use commercial opportunities in appropriate areas of the township, to review the zoning regulations for the Route 46 corridor, which I mentioned, to ensure that this area continues to meet the modern demands of the highway commercial corridor, um, to encourage public improvements where it's visible, uh, feasible, and to utilize pedestrian safety improvements along Main Street, which again, as I mentioned, it it creates that image and it creates, it's, it's um, uh, uh, it's a very good economic development tool. Um, next slide, please. So sustainability has now a focus in, in our state. Um, and these are the few goals where it's to implement policies that work towards uh, achieving local and state climate change goals to continue to improve the town's resiliency and sustainability and to encourage the use of renewable energy um, resources. Next slide, please. 
So in terms of sustainability, um, some of the, these are the key um, issues that we recognize potential for reducing greenhouse gas emissions by promoting energy efficiency, alternative energy use. Um, the governor had adopted um, in 2019, the energy master plan. So it's very much in, uh, uh, in concurrence with what's happening at a state level as well um, for adoption, then adoption of smart growth principles and electric uh, vehicle infrastructure, which we're already doing in the town, but continue doing that to reduce greenhouse emissions, vehicle mi uh, miles traveled, um, increasing frequency and intensity of flooding and rainfall prompts the need for greater stormwater management efforts. And when I said to you uh, that all these different uh, master plan elements are interconnected, that goes back to um, what I mentioned about having green infrastructure as a part of streetscape um, design. So all of this is interconnected is the point I'm trying to make here. Uh, moving on, uh, so next slide, please. So these are the key sustainability recommendations. Um, again, they're described in great detail in the plan, but um, I'm just going to uh, highlight the main um, uh, once uh, key, cons to consider opportunities to implement green stormwater infrastructure and streets in capital improvement projects. We're very mindful of the fact that we want this document to be a, a living document. So it's more about when it's cost effective. We, you know, so that's a, that's a key concern. And we've also mentioned the different funding uh, um, sources that are available um, in the section prior to the recommendations. Uh, we also talk about to consider further energy efficiency improvements at uh, the municipal facilities to identify opportunities to install additional EV stations and municipal owned parking lots and perhaps at the high school parking lot to incentivize the use of lead building practices for new development, to work with utility company to replace existing street lights with downward facing LED lights, and to update the township's stormwater management plan. And with that, we come to the last um, master plan element, which is open space and recreation. Um, so next slide, please. So open space and recreation, um, we identified a few goals with numerous objectives underneath that. And one is to enhance existing parks and open space properties uh, to create, create connections between existing parks to form an open space network, which I, as I mentioned, it goes back to the circulation element. We, we spoke about regional connections and how it's important to have that opportunity for the townships, uh, residents, recreational purposes, and even as a mode of travel too, to utilize strategic, strategic open space acquisition in environmentally sensitive areas. So next slide, please. So we, uh, we interviewed uh, in our department heads um, interview, we also interviewed uh, the townships, uh, recreation director, we spoke to the prior administrator. Um, and um, so just to identify, and then did our own analysis to identify open space and recreation issues. There are in parks, there are limited restrooms, parking spaces, lighting in few of the township parks. Other places it's impossible to put like Sikorsky, which is of less than an acre. Um, I'm, I'm identifying just one, but, but basically, just to make a point, um, to Im improving walking, biking connections to existing township parks and open spaces, to improve facilities to support a range of ages and abilities. So when we do this demographic analysis, we're looking at all of that so that it helps us as we are developing these different master plan elements. And um, util utilizing uh, buyout properties in the Cineac area as potential future open space. So uh, these are the few points. And then next slide, please. So again, um, these uh, the recommendations are uh, under different categories, uh, general parks, uh, but these are the key ones. Um, so one is to implement facility and open space uh, improvements. 
um, to add roadway signage at trail crossings, which uh, is this pedestrian safety concern, which goes back to what I mentioned at the when I was talking about the circulation plan, to explore potential options for implementing the CINIAC Open Space Enhancement Plan um, for the parcels in the uh, Cineac neighborhood to continue to work cooperatively with county and state agencies to implement flood mitigation measures where available and uh, applicable, of course, and to upgrade the rec center and food check restrooms to be ADA compliant. And then finally, we've uh, highlighted uh, upgrades to the various parking facilities, um, which goes back uh, to our next uh, slide, our last slide. So what are the next steps? So um, I we pres uh, the planning board, township council, um, we presented to the plan uh, planning board and um, are presenting to you tonight and will incorporate all the comments and the revisions will be made based upon the feedback received. And then uh, barring any major changes to this plan, uh, we'll adopt it uh, at the October 3rd planning board. And this is um, this is my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. I'll move on to ten questions and comments from the dais. Council President, if I may, uh, Councilman Murphy. Melissa, if you don't mind, uh, just pull that slide back up. If you don't mind going back to the question on uh, future, let me just see. Take like a picture of it. It was future housing types. Okay. Sure. It was toward the beginning. You may have to back out again. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it is uh, before. Yeah, before that, before the be land use. Before, right, right. There we go. Yeah. Okay, uh, Ms. Siobhan, this this data was taken from the survey, correct? That is correct. All right, because I'm I'm looking at the survey now, um, and I'm hoping this is an error. And hoping it's an error. Um, where we have like example uh, townhouse, you have fifty seven percent strongly approve, uh, approve, and then we have twenty two percent disapprove, strongly disapprove. However, on the survey that's coming off the uh, website and off the master plan that we received, it has a, a different number. So it has, let's see your townhouse thirty eight strongly approve, approve, and then forty seven percent disapprove, strongly disapprove. So it appears the numbers are incorrect that whatever's displaying on this presentation. Let me, uh, I, I have actually checked these numbers. Um, when I did this presentation for the planning board, I actually went through the numbers. So I'm really, um, what page are you looking uh, on the? If I, I'll, I'll tell you what it is on the survey. It's 11 of 34, page 11 of 34 of the survey. Okay. That's It'll give you see single family houses 83 yeah. and then eight. That's correct. Then you get to like townhouses and you have 57, 22. And then on the survey, it's let's see, 38 uh strongly approve, approve, 47% disapprove, strongly disapprove. I I know that is an error. I apologize. I'll make that uh, okay. It looks like there's a couple wrong there too, like like multifamamily yeah. mixed use. They all seem to be incorrect. So I just wanted to point that out because I know this was presented to the planning board on uh, this previous Thursday yeah. too. So if this is being disseminated to the public, I just wanna make sure that the you know, the numbers are correct and that the data that we're using is- it's Right, but that's not, um, it's not in, I, I don't believe it's anywhere in the master plan, but thank you so much. I'll take yeah. a look at it and um, rectify if there's anywhere it's, because I remember personally checking it. So I'm, I'm really- yeah, it was just something that stuck out. I noticed it right, so right away. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Hope yeah. we, we could correct that and correct the record. Definitely. But it's page 11. Yeah. It's 11 of 34 yes. no, on the survey. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I, I have to go back and check because I know I wrote, uh, went through everything uh, before I sent it out for the planning board. So I don't know where that error is coming from. Got it. I, I got to check that myself. Okay. And if there is indeed an error, I'll be happy to make that change. Yeah, just because on the on the survey, that, those are the numbers that are shown on the survey. Correct. On the website. So I just want to make sure that those uh, reflect the correct ones. Okay. Um, another quick comment, too, and there's a couple things here uh, in going through the master plan. Um, and one of the statistics you said tonight was that 83% overall felt traffic was an issue. 
Um, one of the questions on the survey as well was, what do you think of the major challenges related to the new construction in Little Falls? And the number one answer was 76% traffic. Um, when I looked at the master plan and I went through it, um, and, I'll, and I'll give you an example, in the land use section, about four and a half pages were dedicated to parking. Um, that was uh, something that, you know, this council approved the parking lot to uh, include additional 40, 50 spaces these past few months. Um, so that is something we're addressing. And so when we look at um, traffic, there was about, I don't know, a column and a couple sentences dedicated to that. So, you know, it doesn't seem to be correlating to what the residents feel are the major concerns. Um, you know, we look at four and a half pages for parking, a parking study done, yet when we look at traffic, the number one issue, there only seems to be about a column, really a couple short paragraphs addressing that. Um, so, you know, and, and again, I didn't see any traffic studies done or anything that would correlate to that. So my ask would be that, you know, we spend a little bit more time addressing some of the issues, uh, maybe expanding on that a little bit more, seeing exactly what we can come up with. Um, I know we talk about development, we talk about flooding. Um, I want to look at some of the proposed redevelopment areas, uh, couple of those, most of them seem to be in flood zones. Um, so my ask would be that we could just go back and maybe revamp the draft a little bit and, and take a look at, you know, what the residents are recommending and, you know, where could we take it? Um, so that's a good point you raise. And I have an answer for that as well, that um, the parking study was done by a um, specialist. Uh, traffic as per the municipal land use law and this plenty of case law and our attorney can correct me if I'm wrong. Traffic is always a perception. Um, no master plan post has a traffic study done, so nor, nor did this master plan do that. However, in terms of traffic circulation, we did look at what people's, um, what people were talking about there. Um, concerns about traffic. We did look at that. We got the crash data from the police. Um, the raw data doesn't get presented here. Um, we look at the main points of it, but I just want to assuage any concerns that you have that we did, overlooked it. That's absolutely inaccurate. We went through a thorough study. Um, and also, um, the reason why I pointed out that 426 people, which is about 3% of the entire population uh, or residents, um, uh, took this survey. So whenever any technical document gets analyzed, we look at it holistically. So, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years, land use planning. Every planning board meeting you come and people will say, oh, the traffic, the traffic. Traffic is always a perception. Um, I'm not saying, so that's why we also look at the data to identify what are the concerns, what are the intersections that are, um, are of concern. Another thing also with traffic is these are state highways or county roads, which are connecting from one end to the other. So. In terms of traffic, that's something, unfortunately, as they're public roads you cannot control, is why we're also talking about the township working with, um, with the state um, and the county to address any kind of um, dangerous or, uh, dangerous is a strong word, but you know, challenging intersections. Does that answer your question? It does. I just think that, you know, and again, I'm not saying that it's not being addressed. I just yeah. think that we can do a little bit thorough to, to maybe address this a little bit more we to see exactly, you know. I, I understand. And that's why I wanted to make it very clear that um, we looked at it thoroughly. It's not that it's not been um, looked at thoroughly. And out of all of that, we're trying to make sense where it is readable and gets on to the next step of having um you know, recommendations, which can be implemented by the township. Does that make sense? What I yeah, it does. Again, I just think that you know we could expand right. a little bit, you know, on that. Thank you, Councilman Murphy. Any other questions? Uh, that's it for right now, Council President. Are there any questions or comments from the days concerning Master Plan, Councilwoman Patel? Thank you, Council President. This might just be my lack of experience, so okay. <laughs> my first master plan. Um, there was a lot of focus on the transient village district. Mm -hmm. And I understand Little Falls is unique in the sense that we do have access to the train station and the bus routes and things of that nature. 
although there is recommendations to cap density and like limit the amount of townhomes, right? No other zoning ordinances are really addressed in terms of like height or setbacks and things of that nature. And I think my concern is that although we've tried to become a transient village and according to the report, our application wasn't approved, even to date, the majority of residents are driving to work. Only, I believe it was 8.7% or, yeah, 8.7% of the residents that are using public transportation. So why are we still continuing to develop in order to attract more people, but they're not using public transportation, they're driving? I, I can I can answer that. Um, first off, if you look at areas recommended uh, for change to go back to all the different um, you know or ordinances, if you go back, we we're looking at the local land use trends. We're looking at the future land use guide. Um, when we're talking about public transit, right? You have a public transit. You have your CBD district, which is your downtown, which is accessible. I think that is a very good, um, like I said, good bones in your township, okay? Um, whether people are using, if you go back to that analysis, we've also mentioned that um, it, it talks about people using the car, but a lot of times people drive and park to a train station or park to some other place and take a, uh, take a bus and that's why the census data that's the only data available i'm going to i'm going to point you to that direction um exactly what we said uh let me see no i i know it was Council, yeah, I, around page 82 right Council, i think i can help shed some additional light on this the term transit village is simply how a particular section of town is zoned or the title that we've applied to it. It doesn't necessarily mean that the intention is to increase the number of people using public transportation. No different than the R1A zone, than the light industrial zone, uh, than the medium density zone. It's just zoned uh, with the title transit village. And that goes back to when they redid the zoning map and broke the town up into sections. I think it was 2016 before I was before I was even mayor, uh, and we just kept the same names associated with each of those zones. Right, but with naming those zones, transit, like starting off as transit village, there's different zoning requirements, which afford increased height structures, for example. So it's not just, it's called a transit village. There's things that come with it. Correct. There's a medium density zone. There's a central business district. There's several that, right. that have the title transit village, but it doesn't mean that that is, again, we, we were denied transit village designation by NJ Transit. No, I understand that. But what I'm saying is that even though we were denied that designation, when correct me if I'm wrong, when it was renamed these certain specific zones, with those zones came requirements that are different than other zones So, when it comes to building. Are, are you suggesting that we just eliminate the transit village before central business district and eliminate no. transit village before the uh, medium density zone and just call it medium density or central business district or the various zone? My question didn't have to do with what it's zoned as. I was trying to understand why there is some focus on increasing that area when the data shows that no one's really utilizing public transportation. So there's not. In fact, there's now density caps and limitations in a zone where none previously existed. So by doing so, we're decreasing the density in those zones. We, and uh, I, no, I'm, but I'm that's glad. from... On oh, page 59, we're actually talking about that to update transit village district ordinance to cap density and include sidewalk widths. Um, and we actually also recognize that amendment to the TVR2 zone 
to restore the R1B zone um, uh, on the western side of Union Avenue. So, um, and then also to amend the TVMD zone to permit townhomes and reduce the maximum dwelling units. And um, we are also amending the TVCBD zone to prohibit underground parking. And I also want to point to to you and everyone in the council that we do have some of these sites which are part of our affordable housing plan. So we cannot make a blanket, um, you know, like change, but we are trying and absolutely work to reduce any kind of perception of impact by reducing the density, capping density, but no master plan puts in that number. Uh, a master plan is more of a policy framework should you the governing body decide then there would be an ordinance in place stipulating the number understood that, that is your question answered or yeah okay does any council members have any questions or comments from the dais i i have a question in part of the master plan in a certain section of town it's uh was uh was mentioned that we'd have a uh, possibility of duplexes coming in. Can you talk about that? Definitely. So um, I, I, I just get, bear with me for a second. Let me quickly grab that. So when we're talking about duplexes, what there are certain areas of the township which have single family homes and um, what duplexes does, is it? okay, um, so, the, it's on page 60. We talk about duplexes because we are saying that the community um, has been impacted by major, major flooding events. And furthermore, with the IFP, the inland flood protection rule, it's becoming more and more difficult. There are existing single family houses that, um, you know, that have fallen into a state of disrepair. So in order to bring those houses back onto the tax roll, and uh, we are recommending that um, certain um, re single family residential permits duplexes on appropriately sized lots. So the, I want to make it very clear that um, having that duplex, um, we are recommending having design standards or actual rezoning, the different ways you could do it. You could permit them as uh, conditional uses in a, residential zone, um, you could put in design standards, because if you look at the last sentence, um, we are saying last but one and the last sentence that um, we are saying that the township may want to revise ordinance standards to permit duplexes on lots, say for having a minimum lot size of 10,000. So the goal here is to not get, say, a 5,000 square foot lot and have two duplexes at 2,500. You have to have appropriate parking. You have to have enough of um, or enough of um, pervious surfaces, uh, green space. Um, so we are also saying. So we are saying that it's recommended that they specify language permitting uh, duplexes only in certain pertinent um, areas of the town, which are especially affected by the you know by the flood. And we're saying that this will provide. It's my analysis that an incentive for homeowners or developers to raise their um, houses um, to comply with the BFP, uh, because a lot of times it's expensive to do that, um, and to uh, and also to avoid properties falling into disrepair. But however, it's important that you maintain the residential character of the neighborhood. Um, so we are uh, recommending that you uh, have design standards to ensure that the duplexes do not detract from, but continue to complement the single family units to maintain the character of the neighborhood. And again, I want to make it very clear to you, the governing body, that all these are our recommendations. It's up to you finally, what of these different recommendations you think, or you would want to have a legislation which actually would implement these. But we do this analysis and we take a look at um, look at it and uh, yeah, make uh, recommendations. Are there any other questions, comments from the days? Okay, at this time, Sam, I'd ask you if you could take a seat here because we're going to ask the public to come up and speak. If you could take a seat next to the chief. Uh, Sam, if you could take a seat next to the chief. And you could use that microphone to answer questions. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Is there anyone here in the uh, government chambers that would like to speak specifically on the master plan? You could come up, sir. You uh, just announce your name. You don't need to announce your address. Danny is cool. Um, it's strange. I came here to talk about the new residents at uh, Citizens of Little Falls because uh, my street was once a quiet. Yes, sir. Um, again, I'm going to preference if you have questions about the master plan, we'll entertain that. The other questions will come under uh, public comment. The townhouses, they don't have much yard for those people. Okay. So they don't have much uh, parking spots. They have maybe one driveway for one car. Sir, again, they come in sir, excuse me. Again, if there's a question about the master plan, you're, you're commenting about a current development, which we could hear you. But if, if you have a question or comment specifically about the plan that was presented tonight, that's the time to talk about that. We, okay, you, uh, you spoke about duplex. Uh, was that like for the empty lots in the flood zone? No, no, that's no. not what I, I spoke that there is, first of all, this is a master plan. It provides a policy framework. It provides recommendation. It's not an ordinance. Okay, what you're talking about, parking for people, that is the part of the okay. ordinance. Right. But right? Okay. So yes. what we, right. So if I may um, just speak. Um, about the duplex. About open duplex. What we are recommending, certain areas of the township. Right? Which area? Um, closer to um, closer to the Pasig, uh River, closer to the river. Like in Singak area? So certain portions of Siniac, um so we are, we are recommending that in those portions, if it's appropriate to permit duplexes and the duplexes, and we're not saying that those duplexes should be done, it's up to the governing body yeah. if they want to adopt the ordinance or not. What we are very strongly recommending is that's a suggestion we're doing because you need, you know, any town, if the properties are completely, um, how, how should I say, dilapidated or in a bad condition, yeah. that's negative for everybody, all of yeah. you, right? So what this master plan does or any master plan does is gives recommendations, suggestion of what would be a good thing, you know, what would be a good idea. Um, and what we are recommending is certain appropriate areas of the township where not all of the township, Okay, um, where there is that additional cost of like raising a house or what 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 have you. Now, if somebody has a ten thousand square foot lot, we're recommending the lot sizes. It if it raising is raising the house is good. That that will help. Correct, but uh, to have overcrowded people on top of each other. We're not, not on top of each other. We're not recommending stacking them one next to each other. Well, next to each other. With the idea, with the whole idea. Everybody needs a bit of space. But yes, right that now, is correct. I'm that feeling is... like my space is being invaded because my street was once quiet and it's no longer quiet. Somebody rang my bell at two in the morning. Somebody's throwing their dog poop down the drain. That's coming from the city uh, that uh, uh, Citizen United. So, sir, again, I, I, I appreciate those comments about the current, but we're, we want to stay concentrated on the master plan. We could, we could take those comments on the public comment. Okay, I just want to say be cautious of overcrowding people in space. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Is there anyone else in the governing uh, governing chambers that would like to speak on the master plan? Ms. DePiero, is there someone that, in our chat that would like to speak concerning the master plan? Okay, Allie, can you hear us? Hello, Allie? Allie? Allie, can you hear us? Now I can hear you because you needed to unmute me. Thank you very much. All right, good evening. Uh, Where... Okay, two questions, but the second one I'll wait till the general. The first one is, um, I looked all over online. Is it possible for us to get a copy of the master plan so that we can review it ourselves? It's on the website. It's it's on the website, Allie. Exactly. The, 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 um, I'm sorry, I looked, but I didn't find it. I'll look again. The, the various images that we've seen tonight are up there. I'm sorry. She wants to know if the images that you did the presentation. The presentation is that up there? 
all yes everything is taken from the master plan the master plan has been on the website okay great then i'll go take a look at that and i will hold my other question till general questions thank you very much Ali, um, it, it's going to be presented at the next planning board, so you're welcome to uh, come or, uh, at that planning board to uh, ask questions or view your or uh, say your comments. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. DiPiero, is there anyone else that would like to speak? Okay, thank you. can't see the name. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Uh, yes. Can you announce your name, please? Yes. My name is Aaliyah. I kind of have a follow-up question from Ali. The portion that you are saying we can view online of the master plan, is that just the PowerPoint presentation from today or the full document? The full, the full document has been posted on the website. Um, I it, It's been on since I before Labor Day. Um, it's like 10 days or more. And it'll be on until um, October 3rd when we'll be presenting it to the planning board. Okay, thank you. And then I have a second question, my, maybe for um, President Scoba. Um, can you describe the process now moving forward? Because I know this is still a recommendation and then the draft would be approved or implemented. Would the town then create its own version of the master plan or adopt the form that H2M has provided? So um, uh, the master plan, uh, can you hear me? Yes. The master plan has to be prepared by a licensed professional planner such as myself. Um, this master plan by state, it's not Little Falls, any, uh, but the state of New Jersey has specific requirements of how it should be written and prepared, which is how this master plan has been done. Uh, by law, the planning board, this review that I did was a cursory review just to keep the governing body uh, abreast. Um, the actual master plan needs to be adopted by the planning board, which we did a presentation to the planning board as well on Thursday and on the October 3rd meeting. Uh, we'll make a presentation. If they have any comments, we'll incorporate those comments. And um, if they think it's uh, right, uh, if they deem it, um, if they deem it appropriate, it will probably get adopted on October third. Do you understand the process? Yes, and since you mentioned that it has to be developed by a licensed professional, is the planning board able to? request elements of the master plan be removed or added based on questions or concerns that they have, or is it only developed by H2M? I'm sorry, uh, no, ma'am, could you repeat yourself, please? Yeah, sure. Since you mentioned that it has to be developed and written by a licensed professional, is the planning board able to request that elements of your proposed master plan be removed or added based on any questions or concerns that they have? Even, for example, some of the data points were inaccurate. Can the planning board request it be adjusted or is it only and solely developed by H2M? The planning board has comments. The data is not developed by H2M. Data bases on this, uh, based on the census data, et cetera, et cetera. So we present that data. Um, but what do you mean by remove the data? What do you mean by remove the data? Not remove the data, but if they, if the planning board would, has a um are you saying if the planning board has a recommendation uh, yes. and they have to change something yes at that time it could, could yes, be they could. change if they want they want something changed they dev most certainly can okay thank you you're welcome so. is there anyone else in our chat that'd like to speak okay thank you thank you for your presentation we're going to move forward can can i have a motion to open the meeting to the public for general matters and agenda items so, so moved. moved by councilwoman Patel. Second by Councilman Murphy. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Madam Clerk. Anyone wishing to address the Township Council may do so through the, through the Council President. It is preferred if you give your name and address for the record. Comments are to be limited to three minutes. However, if appropriate, you may be granted additional time in the sole discretion of the Council President. Members of the public who have joined the meeting virtually and desire to provide comment shall raise their virtual hand in the Zoom application. 
meeting moderator will cue the members of the public that wish to provide comment and the council president will recognize them in order. Members of the public who have joined the meeting by calling in must press star six to mute and unmute themselves and star nine to raise their hand. Members of the public who have joined the meeting via the Zoom application must click the reactions icon and then the raise hand icon. Once the process is complete, we, we will return to the regular order of business. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The floor is now open. If anyone would like to present, come forward. Go ahead. Just state your name, sir. Good evening. Um, I would like to make some re recommendation. Like I noticed on some sewers, like they have a big opening and some have like a bar across with some opening. So no big objects could go down in the sewer because one day I seen uh, um, um, not a wolf. What's that other animal? Uh, wow. Not a fox, but the other one. Uh, coyote. 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 He went down in a drain. I was like, <laughs> what is going on here? So um, I would like to recommend that the uh, sewer drains that have big openings in them, they have the you know ones with the bars and opening. You're, you're referring to the uh, sewer drains that have like a window opening uh, and then they have a grades on the bottom. Is that correct? Yeah, the, so. the, the big opening that, uh, you know, lines up with the curb. Right. The curb right? And um, also, um, there's some empty lots uh, on both sides of my uh, house from one street to the other. And people are using that as like an alleyway and whatever. And it's scary late at night seeing people come uh, across from one street to the other. And um, one night at two in the morning, I was sound asleep. And I thought I heard the bell, my bell doorbell ring in my sleep. I, I thought, wait a minute, was that my doorbell? I go out the window and there's some guy with a towel or a blanket or something covered over his head and body. And I'm, I tell him, hey, what do you want? Why you ring my bell? He doesn't say nothing. He steps down the steps to my door. He's standing in the middle of my front yard, goes on the phone. I don't know if it's going to be a home invasion or what's going to happen. So, well, anyway, the police uh, was able to catch up with him. And um, I don't feel safe there. I, I, I would like a, a fence or something put across them open lots from one street to the other. If you could put a fence there or something. So are you talking that those are uh, lots that were once homes? Yeah, yeah. the buyout lots, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, and they're, and uh, people are crossing because of what? To go to the other side of the street? To go from one street to the other because there's nothing, mm -hmm. you know, blocking them from doing it. You know, it's not a street there. It's not an alleyway. It's just empty lots and people just go from one street to the other, one street to the other. And, and uh, it gets scary, especially at night. I, I don't know who's on the side of my house going from one street to the other. Well, I, I will suggest all the time, if you feel your safety is in peril, is to call the police right away and not to act on your own. And that's why we have this police department. And as you know, they'll come rapidly to your home and yes, effectively thanks. take care of the problem. Yes, so. Right. So we don't want you to be put, placing yourself at peril. I, I'd give you that suggestion. There's no need to do that. Um, does it, anyone have any comments on this, Mayor? Yeah, my only comment would be, and you know, the buyouts that were previously approved in town happened long before myself or any of these council members were, were elected officials here in town. Uh, but the one of the maybe unintended consequences or downsides for you is that once the FEMA acquired the lot, purchased the lot, and deeded it over to the municipality, the issue really becomes that they are open public property, uh, no different than, uh, you know, walking on the on the Mars Canal or or something similar. Uh, so they are public property. They are public land. I know that there are several that surround your house, but somebody uh, walking across it is not really in violation of any particular uh, ordinance or law that we may have. Is that going to be allowed? I mean, I see that going on all over the place with all these. There's, there's not going. There's not going to be no camping allowed, sir. I don't know. I'm just you know trying to prevent. There'll be no camping allowed. I'm just trying to prevent something from happening. Again, if you see anything that's suspicious, please call the police. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. 
So anyone else in the governing council chambers that like to come before us? Ms. DiPiero, is there? Okay, Allie, can you hear us? Allie? Make that on mute. Allie, can you hear us? You're on mute. Now I can hear you. Yes, I can. Thank you very much. Uh, so for the record, can you state your name, please? Sure. My name is Allison Leibowitz, and I live at the mill at Little Falls. And this will be quick. It's very possible I misheard something. I just want to double check. With regard to the National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month proclamation, uh, there were a number of groups that were specifically mentioned. What I don't remember hearing is probably one of the groups that's at the most risk for suicide, which is LGBTQ people. Normally, our town's very good about stuff like that. Did I mishear that in the proclamation or miss not hearing it in the proclamation? Or if, if I'm correct, is there a reason why that subgroup wasn't included? The proclamation read, suicidal thoughts can affect anyone regardless of age, gender, race, orientation, income level, religion, or background. Done. That's what I wanted to check. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And thank you for doing a good job uh, for a lot of the people who are particularly at risk in our community. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, Mr. Berman, can you hear us? Mr. Berman? Mr. Braun, you're on mute. Yeah, sorry. Just waiting to get off mute. Hi, guys. How are you? Your name, please. Tom Barone, 26 Viewmont Terrace. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you for a good meeting, everybody. Uh, I was just looking for a couple of updates. Uh, it's been a while since I asked, specifically the um, the traffic light at the bottom of Francisco. I could see that the uh, the bases are there for them, and I guess we're still waiting on the lights themselves. Um, the bridge crossover for the Peckman, the the extension of the walk. I don't know if that was uh, if there's any progress there, and I and I want to say part of that was also uh, sidewalks on Wilmore. Those are the three things I was going to ask about. Councilman Venturi, would it like to update uh, what's going on with the light on Francisco? Sure, Mr. Barone. I think I can say frustration on our part as well we continue to wait for the light we've been in constant contact with the engineer myself and mr quattrone our business administrator send an email each week kind of checking in on the status and we keep uh, being told by the engineers there's delay i mean i'd love to have this thing uh, put up two years ago but unfortunately with everything that's going on we're dealing with this delay and i'm hoping it'll be soon but no update at this time in terms of timing <laughs> Mr. Brown, on the pedestrian bridge that goes over to Peckman that the county wants to build, um, they're looking at trying to raise that bridge a little bit higher than what was originally spec'd uh, because the notion was uh, new, newer floodplain ordinances uh, that now are in effect would possibly uh, branches or trees coming down the Peckman would get uh, stuck under that bridge. So they're looking at trying to make it higher. Uh, and if, that's the, if they could do that, then that bridge would probably be built. As far as your questions on the sidewalks, I'm not sure. Can you repeat that question? Yep. I, you got yeah. Mayor? Yeah, the sidewalks that were being uh, referred to by Mr. Barone are the sidewalks along Wilmore that we received as a federal grant for safe routes to school. Oh. It was intended to connect the sidewalk from the Francisco uh, intersection there down Wilmore up to Prospect Street. Uh, it is something that is still in play. Unfortunately, it is one of the very, very few federal grants that the municipality receives. And when we, when we receive a federal grant, the restrictions are almost so onerous that it makes the grant not worthwhile. Now, we have been working with the county so that this grant is worthwhile because it is about the same level uh, of, of reporting that's necessary for the bridge itself. So the county has agreed that they will help us in the uh, administration of the grant on that level to assist us in having the work done and performed here in Little Falls to actually effectuate the grant. Now, I say that to warn that the reason for this delay, or I should say not to warn the reason, but the, the reason for the delay was because we have been warned on numerous occasions by other municipalities that these federal grants, several years after the work is completed, several years after you believe the project is closed, several years after you believe all inspections are completed, that for some reason, the federal government will come back, review your grant, and find that you may not have put a proper check on one piece of paper in a box that was submitted and tell you we're no longer giving you these funds. Because it is like most grants, one of the one of the grants that we need to fund the project for 
and then are subsequently reimbursed. So to go through that process, to complete it, for the municipality to pay for it, to then be uh, not reimbursed for it could be uh, an extreme you know, financial uh, burden to the town. So we are looking to make sure that we do everything to have the grant effectuated and receive the reimbursement for it down the road. So there is a little bit of delay. It's the same delay that the bridge experienced for all of these years by not being able to find people who were uh, adequately able to bid for the job because of the federal onerous requirements. Uh, but we are going to be working with the county to uh, administer that grant. Have your question been answered, Mr. Byrne? Yes, it's very hard to believe there's flaws in the federal government, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do want to say as a small business owner in town, though, the uh, the parking at Stevens, I think, is, is a great addition to the area. Uh, I know it's still not completed, uh, but we're always happy for extra spots. So uh, those of us at Falls Creamery, thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Steve Pierre, is there anyone else in the chat that'd like to join us? Okay. Have a motion to um, to close the public comment. So moved. Moved by Councilman Murphy, second by Councilman Hablitz. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. We have items one, two, and three. One is stormwater control ordinance, which I think everybody knows about, but we do have uh, ordinances 1499 and 1500 that comes before this governing body concerning uh, the light towers and the heavy towers. Um, and I know, Chief, this comes from your department, and I'd ask for the Chief to weigh in as well as, as, well as the Mayor why uh, we're entertaining just opening up the bidding process to more towers. Chief, you want to give us a little insight? Yes, Council President. Uh, I believe in the past, uh, my predecessor and even the township has dealt with litigation over the application process. Um, we, we in, back when I first started, we had two towers in town. We had Schumacher and we had first class uh, Falls Auto Body. And then the ordinance changed. We've opened it up geographically to a certain mileage from town. Uh, and then, you know, what we ended up having, having by limiting it to four is we have more applications than four. So um, the uh, municipal clerk, unfortunately, has resorted to writing numbers on ping pong balls and having a lottery with a wheel and a machine to kind of, you know, um, make it as fair as possible. I'm of the opinion if people meet the criteria according to the ordinance as far as storage and security and they uh, have to guarantee the response time and they are geographically, uh, what is it, 10 miles, Cynthia? W whatever it is, they have to guarantee a certain amount of response time. Uh, if they fit all the criteria and there's 10 people who are eligible, uh, we can fit 10 people into rotation. Uh, quite frankly, the way that the rotations work on a weekly basis, basis, we could have 52 towers, one tower per every week for 52 weeks. So I think it would just make the process a little bit more streamlined and it would create a little less aggravation for the municipal clerk. Thank you, Chief. Um, Mayor, you want, I, Mayor, I recall we did have a situation where this tower came before the governing body and we had to settle. Do you have anything you want to add on these two ordinances? We, we have in the past, Council President. And, and just to add to what the Chief uh, has indicated, you know, in conversations with the Chief, we also from time to time run into issues with towers having several subsidiaries resulting in them really being one tower with multiple applications. What that, the problem that causes is that during times of emergencies, when uh, vehicles, there's numerous vehicles on the roadways during a snowstorm, the issue becomes, because they are utilizing the same equipment, when we're looking to get vehicles off the roadway in a rapid fashion, without having our police department sit behind a vehicle for 45 minutes to get one vehicle off the road, while we wait for a tower to respond, by opening this and making it broader and having additional towers, we may be able to more rapidly have towers come into town, remove vehicles off our roadways so we can get them cleared, get them back to being safe and get back to normal operations. So this would also allow for a far more efficient operation by our police department, rather than waiting sometimes for an extended period of time for towers to respond because of the the number of, of tow vehicles is just not there. So I think this would also help uh, assist alleviate those types of issues because although our DPW does an outstanding job, there are times when I hear how come there was, these vehicles weren't removed from the street or towed from the street. And oftentimes it comes back to the fact that there just were not enough tow vehicles available at our disposal to have them removed. So this would also help facilitate uh, the quick cleanup of the roads. Okay. Well does the governing body have any questions or commenting regarding uh, 1499 and 1500? Okay, we'll move forward. 
I have a motion to adopt resolution A, which is the bill list. Moved by Councilman Havlitz, second. second by Councilman Murphy. I'm sorry, Councilman Vincheri. I apologize. Roll call, please. Councilmember Patel. Yes. Councilmember Murphy. Yes. Councilmember Havlitz. Yes. Councilmember Vancheri. Yes. Council President Scoba. Yes. Madam Clerk, read Ordinance 1498. Second reading and public hearing of Ordinance Number 1498, an ordinance entitled Stormwater Control Ordinance. Thank you. The public hearing on 1498 is now open. Does anyone wish to speak on 1498? Seeing no one come before us to speak, the public hearing on 1498 is now closed. I have a motion to adopt 1498. So moved. moved by Councilwoman Patel. Second. Second by Councilman Vincheri. This is a roll call for 1498. Please call the roll. Councilmember Patel. Yes. Councilmember Murphy. Yes. Councilmember Hablitz. Yes. Councilmember Vincheri. Yes. Council President Scoba. Yes. Madam Clerk, please read Ordinance 1499. Introduction of Ordinance Number 1499, an ordinance entitled Ordinance of the Township of Little Falls in the County of Passaic, State of New Jersey, regulating towing and storing services within the township with a second reading and public hearing scheduled for October 7th, 2024. Thank you. Uh, Madam, uh, kind of a roll call uh, to introduce 1499. Did I ask for that? Uh, motion. What's that? Can we do a motion or a second? That, I'm, I apologize. Can I have a motion to introduce 1499? So, so moved. Moved by Councilman Patel, second by Councilman Murphy. Can you call the roll on 1499? Councilmember Patel? Yes. Councilmember Murphy? Yes. Councilmember Havlitz? Councilmember Vancheri? Yes. Council President Scope? Yes. Madam Clerk, read 1500. Introduction of Ordinance Number 1500, an ordinance entitled Ordinance of the Township of Little Falls in the County of Passaic, New Jersey, regulating heavy towing and storage services within the township with a second reading and public hearing scheduled for October 7th, 2024. Thank you. Kevin, motion to introduce 1500. So moved. Moved by Councilman Murphy, second by Councilman Havlitz. Please call the roll to introduce 1500. Councilmember Patel? Yes. Councilmember Murphy? Yes. Councilmember Havlitz? Yes. Councilmember Vancheri? Yes. Council President Scoba? Yes. Council Councilmember Murphy, you want to lead us off with the council discussions? Thank you, Council President. I'll be uh, short and sweet. Thank you. And the jets are on tonight, so it's going to be a depressing night. <laughs> so uh, just real quick, we have a uh, domestic violence uh, prevention committee meeting tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Uh, like I said, uh, last meeting, we have a lot of... Uh, a lot of stuff coming up uh, next month for Domestic Violence Prevention Month. So looking forward to that, uh, hitting the ground running. Um, but again, short and sweet tonight. Thank Council you, President. Uh, Councilman Vincheri. As a Giants fan, I think Jets fans are more lucky than I think. <laughs> I screwed you then. Uh, just a quick update for me as well. Uh, this week on Wednesday at 6 p.m. at Wilmore Road Park, we are going to hold our annual 9-11 ceremony. So as a reminder, everyone is welcome to attend. We have a program in place. So hopefully everyone can come out. And just lastly, I know uh, Corey left a little while ago, but just wanted to say thanks to uh, Leah Marquez's family for coming here tonight. And on Friday, I actually had a chance to meet up with um, Liam's aunts and uncles, as well as his grandmother. We lit up outside uh, gold for childhood uh, uh, childhood cancer awareness month. So we do miss our friend, uh, Leo, but just thinking of him this month during uh, childhood cancer awareness month. That's it for me. Thank you, Councilwoman Havitz. Council President. Uh, so just some library updates. Uh, today, Mayor Damiano and I had the pleasure of doing the monthly uh, Noon in the Know segment um, that updates our residents and library um, patrons on all things Little Falls. Uh, so tune in to social media to see that and for the latest updates on their upcoming events. Also, tomorrow, the library is having their walkway uh, updated. Uh, the library will remain open to the public and curbside service will be available for everyone's convenience. Um, the farmer's market's going strong. This weekend, we had Pencil Works uh, hosting a full art class. Uh, we had about 20 people attend. It was really great. Uh, tonight, we did um, do a proclamation for uh, Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. And this weekend, we have the pleasure of having uh, the Marquez family and the Imps Warriors uh, for a fundraiser. They will be selling a sign supporting childhood cancer. Uh, so please stop down at their table that will be at the market. Um, this weekend, we also kicked off our Little Falls Run Club. Um, it was a great success. Um, all skill levels are welcome. The club has two different routes, a one-mile route and a three-mile route. Uh, this is to prepare people for our spooky sprint, which will be coming up next month on October 20th. Uh, but it's also just to promote some fitness and some uh, social aspects. Uh, so come on down. It will be um, every week at the farmer's market starting uh, 8.30 for stretching and 8.45 for the run. Uh, come down and uh, meet new people and get your fitness in. 
And then lastly, uh, we have the yard sale this weekend. Um, so this weekend, September 14th, uh, we will have the yard sale. Uh, registration is still open at Community Pass. Uh, you can register until this Thursday, the 12th. Uh, the rain date for the, for the yard sale will be September 15th. Uh, so get all your stuff together. I know there's always a good time for clean out in the fall and join our yard sale. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Patel. Thank you, Council President. Um, just a few quick updates. Thursday, September 26, 2024, the Clifton Health Department is uh, holding Understanding Memory Loss at the Little Falls Civic Center starting at 1030. Registration is required. It's up on the website. If you have any issues, always feel free to contact me. Um, we launched a Little Falls Facebook page that will be the links going to be provided and sent out to everyone. I'm also meeting with Scott Miller tomorrow to discuss how we're going to revamp the health department page and our Little Falls Township webpage. And then finally, I'm working with Council President Scoba and the health department to bring the WISE program to Little Falls. Essentially, what that is, is it's an interactive program that teaches techniques and that helps seniors stay healthy, communicate, help them um, better communicate with their doctors, manage pain and things of that nature. So once we're able to secure a date, um, I'll provide more information on that. And that's all I have, Council President. Thank you, Councilman Patel. Uh, September 27th, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Jack Zuckerman through the Senior Advisory is gonna be hosting our arth arthritis uh, program. If you suffer from arthritis, uh, you're welcome to attend. Please reach out to me so we can just put you on the list. That's gonna be at 12 o'clock, pizza will be provided. Um, and that will be at the Civic Center. Have a motion to open the meeting to, to the public for agenda items. So moved. moved by Councilwoman Pavlitz and seconded by Councilman Ben Cherry. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries, Madam Clerk. Anyone wishing to address the Township Council may do so through the Council President. It is preferred if you give your name and address for the record. Comments are to be limited to three minutes. However, if appropriate, you may be granted additional time in the sole discretion of the Council President. Members of the public who have joined the meeting virtually and desire to provide comments shall raise, raise their virtual hand in the Zoom application. The meeting moderator will cue the members of the public that wish to provide comment and the Council President will recognize them in order. Members of the public who have joined the meeting by calling in must press star six to mute and unmute themselves and star nine to raise their hand. Members of the public who have joined the meeting via the Zoom application must click the reactions icon and then the raise hand icon. Once the process is complete, we will return to the regular order of business. Thank you. Would anyone like to speak in the chat? There's no one here that's coming forward in the council chambers. Can I have a motion to close the public comment? Moved by Councilman Havitz. Second. Second by Councilman Venturi. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. I want to thank the staff for assisting me in putting on this meeting. We have a motion to adjourn this meeting. So moved. Moved by Councilman Murphy. Second. Second by Councilman Venturi. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? This meeting is now closed.